Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I want you to learn how to distinguish the unique traits found in the multituberculates, the Allotheria, and their relationship to modern monotremes. In doing so, we'll look at the two groups of successful Mesozoic mammals and discuss the major evolutionary diversification of mammals during the age of dinosaurs. In the previous lecture, we had discussed the anatomy of the first true mammal, Morganeucodon, from the early Jurassic, as well as its close relative, the non-mammal, Psychonodon. During the late Triassic and early Jurassic, we begin to see the rise of the three major groups of Mesozoic mammals. The Aleotheria, the Monotremata, and the, the late arrivers, the Metatheria and Eutherians, which start to appear in the Cretaceous. There are a few fossils known from the early to late Jurassic, which preceded this split. And these fossils are sometimes placed as early offshoots from the three major groups of Mesozoic mammals. And several of these miscellaneous mammals are at least worth mentioning. The first is a really, really, really teeny, tiny, tiny little fossil mammal, Hydrocodium from the early Jurassic of China. The skull of Hydrocodium measures only 12 millimeters about a centimeter, which makes it one of the smallest mammals ever known. Hydrocodium was about the size of a paperclip, but it's very important in understanding the evolution of mammals. Hydrocodium, like Morganeucodon, is a true mammal. The ear and jaw resemble more advanced mammals, and the teeth occlude with each other when the jaw is closed with distinct molars, premolars, canines, and incisors. Its tiny size also was a feature of most Mesozoic mammals, which would remain smaller than the size of a typical house cat for the next 130 million years. Another interesting Mesozoic mammal group that appears to, to split off before the trification of Mesozoic mammals is the Docodonts. Docodonts are a small group of very rare fossils that are found in the late Jurassic, from the same rock units that produce the giant dinosaurs of Patasaurus and Diplodocus. Docodonts are a small mole-like mammals, which are very rare. <laughs> My dream is to find one of these tiny little fossil mammals, but uh, so far I've not found one in the Morrison Formation, despite all my looking. Fossils are rarely found, but over the years, a nice record has slowly, slowly emerged. The docodonts are recognized by an unusual pattern of cusps and basins on their teeth, and the hourglass shape of their upper molars. Because these early groups are outside of the branch that includes all living mammals, they are sometimes grouped together in a more broad group than just mammalia called the Mammaliaformes. The first of the three groups, the Allotheria, are recognized in the fossil record clear back to the late Triassic, but they quickly radiated during the Jurassic and Cretaceous, becoming one of the most dominant of the Mesozoic mammalian groups. The most primitive group is called the Hyramibiidae, with later forms in the Jurassic that split into two subgroups, the Euhydra mediidae and the Multituberculata. There is some debate whether the two groups are a monophyletic, as some people have suggested that the Euhydra mediidae are a much more primitive branch on the mammalian tree. However, there are two major characters that they all have in common. All members of the Allotheria have large incisor-like teeth and multicuspid molars, which feature rows of cus. Most are arboreal mammals and some were burrowers. 
but they likely developed these very specialized teeth to feed on seeds. Now, during the Jurassic, seeds were restricted to the gymnosperms, including primitive ginkgo and conifers. The long incisors allow these animals to pluck out seeds from cones and use their multicust cheek teeth to crush up the pulp. Several of the early Hyramemiidae and Euhydramemiidae fossils are known from nearly complete fossil skeletons from China, including Arbiohyramemia and Shi Shu and Zing. Shu Sha, <laughs> from, all from the Jurassic. And in fact, the Euhydromemiidae are restricted to the Jurassic period. The other group of Allotheria, the multituberculates, would go on to success in the Cretaceous and Cenozoic. The multituberculates get their name from the many cusps that form rows on their molar like teeth. The multituberculates also develop something quite unique, a blade like fourth lower premolar, which was used to slice the husks of seeds and nuts. This innovation led to great success for the group with the origin of angiosperms, the fruiting and nut bearing plants that first appeared in the early Cretaceous. The early Cretaceous of Mongolia, the multituberculates also became excellent burrowing animals, and a number of complete skeletons are known from the same rock units as Velociraptor. The Aliotheria were likely egg laying mammals like modern monotremes, but exhibit an epic pubic bone like marsupials, and so could have been a pouched animals like a modern marsupials. No fossil mammal eggs have been found in the Mesozoic. The epipubic bone is an extra bone that extends from the pubis bone and supports the belly. Although its function in regard for uh, carrying pouched offspring is, is unverified. The multituberculates were highly successful. It's uh, particularly striking to see their long success given how many millions of years they lived on Earth. They arose in the early Jurassic and only succumbed to extinction in the early Eocene, with a run of nearly 150 million years. My own research into their extinction appears to support the idea that climate change uh, associated with the global warming event at the Paleocene-Eocene boundary was extremely detrimental to their survival. Specimens are common in the Paleocene of North America, and the multituberculates are a major component of the Paleocene fauna. However, after the great climatic event at the Paleocene-Eocene boundary, they are extremely rare in the early Eocene, with fewer than 10 occurrences. In the Eocene, the rodents, which had evolved earlier during the Paleocene were able to exploit the recovered forests of the early Eocene from this abrupt period of hot temperatures that burned off the great forests with fires at the Paleocene-Eocene boundary. Multituberculates were able to survive the KT boundary, but climate change and the rise of the rodents doomed the group to eventual extinction. Another group of Allotheria to mention are a group likely related to the Euhyramibiidae, but are restricted to the uh, southern continents during the Cretaceous, the Gondwanatheria. Known uh, mostly from isolated teeth, uh, the best known Gondwanatheria is Ventana from Madagascar. It was a marmot-like mammal with multicust molars that show quite a bit of wear from chewing, uh, like modern uh, grinding mammals, and large procumbent incisors. Often depicted as the first or second branch on the mammal tree are the monotremes, a group that includes three living genera, Tachyoglossus and Zyglostus, the echidnas found in Australia and Tasmania, and Ornithorhynchus, the platypus found in the rivers along the east coast of Australia. 
Monotremes lay eggs, and hence when they were first discovered, they were quickly realized to belong to a primitive group of mammals called the monotremes. Monotremes and several known multituberculate fossil skeletons exhibit bony spurs on their ankles in male individuals. In the living platypus, these spurs connect to a poisonous gland which injects venom and is thought to play a role in interspecies competition during the breeding season and was likely found in the common ancestor of both groups. The fossil record of monotremes, however, is rather patchy, but is quickly diversifying with new discoveries. During the late Jurassic and Cretaceous, two groups are often placed within the monotremata group, the, the Eutriconodonta, which includes a range of mammals united by having three cusps on their teeth, and the Osteosphenidae, a small group that is limited to Australia, South America, and Madagascar, which exhibit a weirdly looking tribosphenic molar. All right, you should be able to distinguish the unique traits found in the multituberculates, the Allotheria, such as their procumbent incisors, their multicast teeth, and their bony ankle spurs, and their relationship to modern monotremes. In the next vid video, I'll teach you about the tribosphenic molar and introduce you to the Osbornean terminology used to name the cusps on mammal teeth. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the description below.